Welcome back to the shop guys. Okay, we have a neglected, poor, sad little axe head, hatchet head I should say. This would have been used by carpenters, or roofers I should say. Pretty sure it's roofers because there's actually some, some roof and tar you can see right on there. Anyway, this comes in a big lot of tools, as most of my finds do. Looking kind of sad for itself. I think it would make quite a good company to my older cedar shake, I think it is. Cedar shake hammer, um, hammer hatchet. Anyway, I'm not going to dip this in the vapor rust. I don't think this is really worth a whole lot of money. I'm just going to clean up make it look pretty. And maybe we'll get to use it. Make sure we don't get the don't let the blade get too hot. We don't want to take that um, hard the temper off there because, like I said before, I don't have any way of heating up the blade. Well, yet I will do at some point, but at the moment I don't. So I'm trying to maintain that temper on there. Slowly but surely we're getting there. I don't know if you can see, I almost got most of the pits out. I'm trying to get it down as best I can. Unfortunately, I've got real OCD when it comes to stuff like this, so I'll probably be here forever trying to get all these pits out and make it look nice and shiny. I really am quite surprised. I knew it was pitted, but I didn't realize it was this bad, but anyway. Got nothing else to do, so let's get back to it. Getting closer now, we're on 400 grit at the moment. Ok, 
Okay guys, now we get to the truly labor intensive part that's really annoying. Um, I'm sure on the screen it looks like it's pretty shiny. I mean, it actually is, it just has a few uh, minute scratches. And really the only way of taking this out is to do it by hand, unfortunately, and it takes so, so long. Um, obviously for you it's not going to because we've got the editing, but this is going to be a bunch of my time taken up. But anyway, let me get back to it. Stop talking because I'm sure you don't want to hear me talking all the time. Let's get to polishing. This is, uh, yeah, just see, see, 800 grid that dry paper. And no, I'm not going to use a sander block because this, this is concave and convex, it's all over the place. Alright guys, now it's the turn for Mr. 1000 grit. And again, like I said earlier, we're going to go across the grate. This last time I sanded this way, now I'm going to go across. And you'll see it will look awful to start with because what it's doing, you're going across the scratches that are already on there, even though it looks like it's not even hardly scratched. But what it's doing, all you're seeing is a different um, pattern of scratches. And what's good about that, and I'm sure you can't see it on the on the film, there are no scratches going this way, which means I don't have any deep scratches. Fine scratches are okay, but deep scratches will definitely show. So this is looking good. We're starting to get into the really really fine sandpaper now. This next one is going to be 1500 grit, and. Uh, it's very very smooth you can still see the scratches are coming this way from the last time so this time we're scratching this way like I told you before this sandpaper is so fine that I can barely feel any resistance when I'm pushing across there it's almost like trying to rub a piece of paper across something 2000 grit for this one we're getting close. Twenty five hundred grit, and as you can see, although you can't really tell because of how the, how the light is, but can you see my reflection on my fingers? It's getting there. It's not quite there, but it's getting there. Hopefully, not too much longer. Mm, much better. I'll tell you what guys, this is uh the pretty is starting to come out. I'm not even gonna point to where the reflection is, you can see that. I mean this is getting super super shiny. And we're still on the twenty five hundred grid. We've got one more to go and it's gonna be to the buffer. Kind of wondering how you how you could even exceed this sort of a shine. I mean, it's, it really it's even like a mirror now, to be quite honest. And this level of polishing, it's only taken a mere well, oh eight hours. That's all it's taken. Can you tell the sarcasm in my voice there? Trust me, I so love doing this. That was sarcasm too. Actually, I really do like doing this. If I, was, I wouldn't do it, so I don't want to talk about it. But we've got one more to go. Three fares and grid. And this stuff is, 
it's like tissue paper, it's, it's nothing to it. And I'm sure if you can even hear it on the on the film, you're not going to hear it's you know, you know, we can hear like the, the sand, the um, paper grabbing against the surface you're um, sanding against. But this stuff is going to be like running paper against itself. And this is the last step before we take it to the bench grinder, uh, so the bench polisher. Now, right here, coming along here, can you see it looks like a like a line coming across there? That is the difference between the hardened or the tempered metal at the front of the blade and the regular untempered metal behind it. You know, I can actually I can see it a lot easier than you can on the camera, but it's a definite line going across there. And this is a lot more difficult to um, to sand. You can feel it's a lot harder. All right, guys. We got a pretty damn good shine on it already. Let's see if we can improve on that with the um, buff. You can see there's very fine scratches. And if, to be quite honest, if it doesn't get much better than this, I really don't care. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on this. I've been on there way, way too much time as it is. Anyway, let's see what we got. Let's see if we can get a little bit more shine. I'd say that's a little bit of a difference, what do you think? Okay, now onto the thing I absolutely hate to do, and that's the handle. This week I'm gonna repurpose. I don't know if you remember from the um, the other hammer uh, hatchet uh, movie that I done or video I done, but I had the the handle that was there that I was using as a template. Well, that one just so happens to be the same eyelet size as the as this hammer hatchet, so I'm gonna repurpose it. I don't know if you can remember, but it had this horrible design with the flats and I can't, I can't stand things like that it's angular I like things to be smooth and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this piece up here get it nice and flush and flat where I need it to be and then hang the head because if this splits I don't want to put too much time into doing the rest of the handle so anyway enough talking let me get to it Okay, I just went outside and cut the slot down, the handle, on my bandsaw. Yes, it's still working, and yes, it still has a really loud bearing, which I think is quite funny, because it still works anyway. i also done a, cut another walnut wedge. I just test fitted this on here a moment ago, and you can see that's where 
I'm pretty sure this handle was for this hatch to be quite honest it came in a big box and stuff and it fits really well but this line here is where I just drove onto and I had a hell of a job getting off it was tight so we get a good fit on that so fingers crossed that when I put it on here for hopefully the last time that when I drive the wedge in there it doesn't it doesn't split because that'd be really annoying if it did see this part goes on by hand See, it's got a really good fit on there. Now all I've got to do is think, keep my fingers and toes crossed. Because the thought of doing another, a new handle and spending a good couple of hours doing that is not very appealing. Seeing as I still don't have any ways of getting the wood off quickly like the spoke shave or whatever wow Went a bit crazy with the glue there maybe that's why I have such a big gigantic thing of glue I'll just spill it everywhere Please don't split. 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 Oh, thank goodness. I'm so pleased that didn't split. You don't even realize. Okay, I'm going to the bandsaw again. I'm going to cut this off outside. <clears throat> you said it before. I can't be bothered to set the camera up, basically. So. Sorry, I'll do that, come back inside. You can see where I've already started to take the the angles off this. That could be real quick to do that. Then we'll treat it. We're gonna try some uh, teak oil, I think this time, maybe. Anyway, we'll be back. Now power tools always work a lot better when you have them plugged in. I found that over years of practice. All right, put some of this teak oil on. I'm thinking it's gonna soak into here like ridiculous. There you go. Just soaking it up like you won't believe. Well, what this will do, it actually hardens once it gets into the wood. It acts like a hardener. So hopefully it will protect the, the wood from drying out anymore. Well, that's quite the difference, huh?
And I just didn't realize one thing I didn't do, which is really annoying. In all the excitement for trying to get the handle to work, and I am very excited because it, didn't, it took a lot of the time off my work, I forgot to do the put an um, edge on the blade. So, let's see if we can do that without damaging the nice shine we have on here, which is a real pain in the butt, but oh well. Alright, guys, 400 grit first. I guess it's kind of important to have an axe that actually cuts things, huh? Go up to the 800 grit. I, would, I definitely need to get a new ways and means of sharpening knives and stuff because this is kind of crappy to be quite honest. I'm sure you're already thinking that anyway. Well that wraps up another one guys, this one's a bit of a trailer queen I guess, nice and shiny, but it works real good, as you can see, got a good edge on it in the end. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, comment, dislike if you want to, just talk to me in the comments, you know I'll always answer you, I think it's kind of neat having a conversation with people. So anyway, that's another one. Until the next one. Have a good one, guys.